is going on fellow game developers my name is Money Wolf and in today's video we're continuing our 2D endless runner tutorial now in this video we are going to be making our game get more difficult over time so we're going to be making our spawner object spawn faster and the obstacles to also get faster over the time of playing the game so let's get right into it the first thing we want to do is open up our spawner script and we need a few new variables one of them being a private float called time alive which will just calculate the amount of time we are alive for and what we're going to do with this is we are going to go into our update and when we are playing we're just going to say time alive is plus equal to time dot delta time to basically slowly increase the uh, speed or the time we've been alive over time and by default, we want to set our time alive equal to 1F. This is because this will, um, if we set this any lower from 1F, then we're going to have really slow starting uh, gameplay, and we want it to be started at 1. That means any time we reset the game, we also want to reset this timer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to a, we're going to create a new private void, call it reset timers. I'm going to call it reset factors because we're going to be resetting a lot of different numbers in this. And the first one is we're going to basically just take this time alive and we are going to paste it inside of here. We then want to get our game manager instance. We're going to say game manager dot instance dot on play dot add event listener and we are going to listen for reset factors this means anytime we click the play button or we start playing it's going to reset our play factors back to here and we're going to have some more we add to here later we then want to add in two new um private floats that are basically going to be the actual value of our obstacle speed and spawn time these are just going to be our base values that we uh, multiply over time so what we want to do here is we just want to set up two new private floats i'm going to call them the exact same thing so we're going to have obstacle spawn time but i'm just going to prefix it with an underscore just so we know uh, that these are the right ones we don't want to set private float obstacle speed as well down here now these are two things we also want to reset back to zero or back to the default time when we reset here so what we're going to do is we're going to get these paste these in and set these equal to their same thing so we're going to get obstacle spawn time and obstacle speed and set them back to their base value when we reset the uh, game now in our update manager while playing the game we want to do some calculations so i'm actually going to create a new function here called cal calculate factors and we are just going to go down to above reset factors and we're just going to set a private void calculate factors and in here we're going to basically take our obstacle spawn time and sell it equal to a equation or some sort of uh, factor so the first thing we want to do is get the base value now the base value is going to just be our obstacle spawn time we're then going to multiply that by a mathf.power function and we are going to uh, raise the power of the um, time alive to the flow of something small so we want to just create a factor for each one of these that will change as well so let's just go under here and create a range which is going to go from zero and one and set it to a uh, public float which is going to be called the obstacle spawn time factor and we'll set this to something like 0.1f by default we'll then copy this paste this and just change the name to match the um, actual time here and we'll set this one to 0.2 because we want the obstacles to get faster quicker but the actual spawn time factor to um, get slightly quick or slower basically so here we go what we want to do is now take these factors and multiply them in here so we want to say obstacle spawn time factor and this over time will get bigger and bigger quicker and quicker which will be nice we then want to just copy this and change this from the obstacle spawn time to be the obstacle speed 
we can also do that here obstacle speed we can keep the time of life the same but we also want the obstacle oh, obstacle speed factor there we go now that should get more difficult over time but we need to apply these in our actual methods here so what we want to do is find where we use our obstacle spawn time up here and replace the obstacle spawn time with the new obstacle spawn time there we then want to go down to our obstacle speed and we want to just apply that here where we had our obstacle speed and that should now over time make our game get harder and harder now back in our unity thing you'll see here we have some different factors you can see the uh things are overlapping this here which isn't great but we can see that there we then just want to actually check this by changing this to debug mode and you can actually see the values here so now if we hit play on our game we should see these all these values well right now stay the same until we hit play now when we hit play you can see these values will start changing and as they spawn objects the objects will actually rel uh, be using these factors you can see they will slowly get faster now we're at different times you can see here the numbers are now at six and so are now going a lot quicker than they were and you can mess around with these factors to actually see what sort of speed you want so you can see here these are now going to start coming in a lot quicker and we're going to see how long we can survive for and hopefully it's quite long however this these numbers may start getting really crazy so you can see here we're already at 35 seconds in and our obstacle uh, speed is um, quite high you can see here the spawn timer is also pretty high as well i've also noticed we actually have an error here so these are actually spawning slower over time instead of getting quicker so we actually need to reverse this one here from adding to subtracting so inside of our spawner script back in our calculate factors i, I was supposed to divide our spawn timer and not multiply because this will just mean it will get longer however we want it to get shorter so it spawns more frequently and not slower so we want to actually divide this here so now let's go back to our game and hopefully this time we should see the sp obstacle spawn time go down back in our game we can start and you can see this time is actually now going down meaning they should start spawning in a lot quicker here we go we're getting a lot quicker you can see they're actually starting to get quite quick now and over time this is going to get a lot quicker and these should it would take about 8,000 seconds for this to get down to near zero so we should oh i died we should be good now we need to test if they reset when we click replay and by the looks of it they do because the obstacle speed went from like six or seven down to um so a lot smaller and the time alive reset so if we die now you can see we're at 16 seconds 17 seconds on time alive seven on obstacle speed and if we reset those times go back down to one four and two which is great that's exactly what we wanted so now you can see this is slowly going to get more difficult and it's going to start getting a lot harder the further you uh, survive Anyway guys that is going to be it for this tutorial it was a quick short one just to show you how you can implement a more difficult spawner don't forget to change your property or your inspector back to normal mode and mess around with these values to get something that you enjoy most but guys if you uh, want the source code for this you can actually access it on my patreon the links are in the description it helps it means you guys can support the channel and get all the source code lesson by lesson so lesson five and six will now be up after this video so guys, that's going to be it. So don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, also leave a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.